Do not, not worry. worry. Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of Do Not Worry. I am your host, Anthony, coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut in Jaitewe. We have a very special episode for you guys today, but before we get kicked off, I just wanted to take a second to thank everyone who liked and subscribed to uh, the channel, everyone who left a comment. I really appreciate all the support. Um, honestly, I was expecting the first episode to get anywhere between like 200 to 300 views because this is a brand new channel. No one knows anything about it. So the fact that it's almost at 1,000 views as of this recording, I, I really appreciate it. And um, to everyone who subscribed, thank you. And to anyone who hasn't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Come on, I urge you to subscribe. This is going to be pretty fucking awesome. We're going to have a lot of cool videos coming up. And uh, starting with this episode, today I'm going to be talking about a couple of cool things like WhatsApp, what's happening, should you switch? And if you do want to switch... Should you go for Signal or should you go for Telegram? We're going to talk about Gwyneth Paltrow's exploding vagina candle. You heard that right. We're also going to be breaking down a poll that uh, Lebanese comedian Nur Hajar did on his Instagram, asking people to vote for their least favorite Lebanese influencers. I'm going to break them down. I'm going to talk about these guys one by one. I'm also going to give you guys a few Netflix recommendations. And we're going to end it all by uh, talking about one of my favorite Lebanese influencers. Last week, I talked about Eni Stabit. I'm going to be talking about someone else this week. So stay tuned and thanks again for watching. Okay, so WhatsApp has been, well, I mean, to say uh, in the news lately would be an understatement. So I'm sure everyone you know has asked you, are you keeping WhatsApp? And if not, are you switching to Signal or are you switching to Telegram? I've had the same thing. Um, so let me sort of break down what my rationale has been. But before we get into that, what is up with WhatsApp? What is the reason everyone's sort of fleeing the app? Well, not too long ago, but like a week ago or something, 10, two weeks ago almost, they changed their privacy policy. They updated their privacy policy. And when people sort of broke it down, it sort of seemed like they were saying that they're going to start sharing some information with Facebook. Everyone panicked. Everyone freaked out. And then WhatsApp came out and tried to clarify that, no, 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 we're not going to, we're not going to, uh, share anything with Facebook and they released sort of this uh, like this infographic WhatsApp cannot see your private messages etc etc but then a bunch of people went and read through WhatsApp's existing user agreement and its existing user agreement says WhatsApp currently shares certain categories of information with Facebook companies the information we share with the other Facebook companies includes your account registration information such as your phone number transaction data service related information information on how you interact with others, including businesses, when using our services, mobile device information, your IP address, and may include other information identified in the privacy policy section entitled information we collect or obtained upon notice to you or based on your consent. So what that means is that WhatsApp has already been sharing a lot of our information. Now, they don't necessarily share our messages themselves, like the content of the, of the message. That is still encrypted. What they do share is sort of the metadata around that message. At what time did you send it? On what device? Where were you when you sent it? Etc. And they shared some of that information with Facebook. So that is the main concern. It's no longer about the updated policy. WhatsApp can, can release all of the infographics they want on Twitter trying to calm people down. It's no longer about that. They can keep postponing it as much as they want. We know that we now figured out, or at least I did, you know, a bit too late, that WhatsApp has been sharing all this data with Facebook and all these other companies for so long. So this is why people are sort of leaving WhatsApp en masse and they're joining either Telegram or Signal. So if you're thinking of doing the same, which one is right for you? Based on everything I've read, Signal is the more secure one. And for one main reason, so the main reason Signal is more secure is because your messages are encrypted end to end from the get go on Telegram, your messages are actually not encrypted. You have to opt in to get them encrypted by choosing an option called secret chats or something like that. So when you first sign up for Telegram, it's actually less secure than WhatsApp. But Signal also doesn't store your messages anywhere. Telegram stores your, like they have like a server with all of your messages where they kind of live. So does WhatsApp. They have like this huge server, for, I think for Google and for Apple. And the messages in the server apparently are not encrypted. So if these ever get hacked or something, potentially all of your messages and all of my messages, all of our messages 
are in danger of, of getting leaked or just whatever exposed. So Signal to me seems to be the safest option. So that's the one I'm switching to. That's the one I'm urging all of my friends to switch to. Obviously do your own research, but that's sort of it in a nutshell. The one thing that this has revealed is how, how dependent we are on these free applications. Like I'm sure you're running into some trouble with a lot of your friends who are like, dude, it's not worth it. They already have all your data from somewhere else. Or it's kind of a hassle to have to switch and ask everyone to change and et cetera, et cetera. I'm running into that issue a lot. And like my sister was kind of resistant at first because she already feels like our data is being collected by everyone. So what is this going to change? The way I see it is, dude, if you can stop the bleeding just a little bit, why not? And especially like this is free. It's not like they're asking you to buy a more expensive, more secure device or anything like that. This is a free application that you can just replace on your phone and automatically you can feel a little bit more secure and you can share a little bit less information with Mark Zuckerberg. So I think it's important for us to feel like we're able to sort of leave these applications and leave these things that we've been telling ourselves we can't survive without them. I think we can. Some people might also ask or wonder like, what do you have to hide or what are you afraid of? Like it reminds me of this guy who, um, when I went to college in the States, there was this dude in one of my business classes who once said, he was an ex-military guy, he said, Privacy is the refuge of the guilty. So, I mean, like, what he's trying to say is that if you've got nothing to hide, then you shouldn't be worried about, like, privacy. I mean, while, like, yes, he kind of makes a point, it's still, like, dude, if people want to send messages or private messages and not feel like they're being watched or followed or tracked, they should be able to do so. Okay, this next one's a doozy. A real doozy. Uh... Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle reportedly explodes in UK woman's home. So for those of you who don't know, Gwyneth Paltrow like has this website called Goop. And like they do a bunch of weird shit on there. She has a, like a bunch of weird treatments like putting like crystals in your vagina and stuff like that. Just a weird, weird bunch of shit. One of like the most eccentric products on that, web on that website is a $75 candle emitting the private scent of Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina. Um, uh, it costs $75 and the scent notes include uh, geranium, citrusy bergamot, and cedar absolutes juxtaposed with damask rose and ombrette seed, according to her online store. Not gonna lie, that sounds like a pretty good smelling vag right there. So, I mean, I would get why this lady bought it and people actually buy this thing. So apparently... This smells like my vagina candle that the actress Petals on Goop exploded into flames in the living room of a UK woman who won the odiferous product in a quiz. Oh, she won it in a quiz. Well, that makes sense. Okay. The candle exploded and emitted huge flames with bits flying everywhere, Jody Thompson, 50, told the outlet. I've never seen anything like it. The whole thing was ablaze and it too, and it was too hot to touch. There was an inferno in the room, the media consultant from Kilburn, North London added. Thompson, who lives with her partner, David Snow, said they threw the flaming candle out the front door. It could have burned the place down. It was scary at the time, but funny looking back that Gwyneth's vagina candle exploded in my living room, she said. Couldn't agree more, ma'am. Um, what's funny is that it says a Goop spokeswoman told the Post in a statement that, Thompson, that Thompson's candle wasn't purchased through the outlet, so we aren't able to verify its authenticity. So like, are you telling me there's like an underground sweatshop of people making fake Gwyneth Paltrow vagina candles? Like that, that's the story here, not this. Is that they think that it might not be authentic? I, I want to see that fucking sweatshop, is all I'm saying. So anyways, I mean, that's the story. Um, Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast, who, who I'm a huge fan of. I love those guys. Um, uh, he actually made a candle that smells like his asshole as like a parody. And they also sold out. And it apparently smells rancid, but yeah, uh, that's, that's the Gwyneth Paltrow story in a nutshell. Okay, this topic here is probably the juiciest topic of the episode, and it involves a poll that uh, Lebanese stand-up comedian Nur Hajar put on his Instagram maybe a couple of weeks ago, I can't remember, but I remember that I, I took a screenshot of the results because I thought it was something that I wanted to discuss. And I think he basically asked his followers, who are your least favorite um, Lebanese influencers, basically, or five most hated accounts on Instagram. And the results were Tufiluk, Lama, Gino Raide, Polexandra, and Political Pen. Um, so I'm going to basically share my thoughts on each of these accounts. I know some of these people in person, so it might be a little bit weird to talk about, but um, 
this podcast is all about honesty. And I mean, hey, I'm not going to shit on anyone or anything. So I'm going to start with Tufiluk. Tufiluk, um, hugely popular on Instagram. I, I totally get why he would be voted as one of the most hated ones. I do not like his brand of comedy. Not everyone has to, but it does seem to be a little bit obnoxious for my taste. Is he like that in real life? I don't think so. I mean, most likely everyone puts, you know, plays up their character on social media. And there's a guy that I really like called Tony Kanan. You all most likely know him. He's huge on Instagram. He hangs out with him. Like I see it on Instagram. So if Tony likes him, I'm guessing he's not that bad. But I totally get this one. So I'm not going to really argue it much. Uh, another one is Paul Alexandra. Now, Paul Alexandra, um, I followed her in like I think most of you during the revolution. She was a perfect source um, and resource for like all, what was happening in the streets. People were tagging her anytime someone filmed something or anyone, anytime someone had an important update or news to share, she would share it. I think it was an incredibly useful Instagram account, to be honest with you guys. So I don't think people voted for her because of that. I think this might be more backlash on the fact that maybe I think she ended up going on like some television show on like LBC or MTV, something like that. And influencers of Thora Uheke. And I think that maybe... Um, she's getting some backlash because of that. Like maybe her being associated with the revolution, even though I don't know, like from what I gather on social media, she's a life coach and she seems like an incredibly sweet lady, an incredibly nice person. So I don't think people don't like her personally. I think they maybe don't like the fact that she's that active politically. Maybe some people disagree with her, with her political opinion as well, or they just don't think like she's qualified or credible enough to be talking about these things. But from what I remember, she was incredibly useful during the revolution. I got so much, I got access to so much information because of her. So that's what I think about uh, Polexandra, a political pen. Now that is also a, an account that I followed starting in the revolution back in Lebanon. Um, look, my guess is anything political, you're going to have people who agree and who disagree. You know what I mean? So if the people disagree with what political pen has to say, like from a, from a just political perspective, just from like the basics of who they like, who they don't like. I get it. If I recall correctly, I think political pen used to sometimes get criticized for maybe sharing some unverified videos or news before it was really verified. So maybe that's one of the reasons as well. Again, I found them pretty useful during the revolution. Not gonna lie, I don't check their page nearly as much now. Or Polexandra for that matter. Like I don't really know what, what they're about anymore. But those are that. Uh, Lama. So Lama, I know Raid in person. Uh, we've hung out a couple times, like mainly I've, I've seen him at premieres for like Marvel movies or DC movies. Uh, he's, we're both really big into comic book movies and comics and stuff like that. So every time I see him, I am happy to kind of talk to him. We sort of break down the movies and he's got some pretty good theories and stuff. So I wouldn't say we're close friends or anything like that. But I mean, I know the guy. I've worked with him slightly. Um, him being on this list, I'm kind of surprised because like, look, I don't love his brand of comedy. He's like, like Tofiluk, I'm not really a fan of either of their comedy. Not saying that their brands of comedy are similar at all. They're both very different, I would say. But I just don't find either of their work particularly funny. That's nothing against Raid. I'm sure he would say the same about my work. Um, but I think I'm in the minority though. Like his page has hundreds of thousands of views. He's like one of the most popular pages in Lebanon. So me seeing him on this list, I think is also also goes back to the Polexandra thing where I think ever since the revolution started and he maybe tried to position himself as like a credible Thoda leader or Thoda movement, I think that is what people are kind of annoyed by. And look, I I kind of one of the when I was talking about Anis Tabit last week and saying why I liked him, Anis is a movie fanatic and he's a he's an influencer, but he's known for his love of movies. So when Anis talks about movies, he's credible. You, you, you believe what the guy is saying, or you at least know that he knows what he's talking about. Lama was always, you know, a comedy page and making fun of like music videos and commentary and a lot of that stuff. Him making the switch into politics, I think most people are like, dude, why should I listen to you? So I think that's why he's on this list. And hey, if people don't find him funny, then that's another thing. But he just has so many followers that I find it hard to believe that a lot of other people, you know, aren't really big fans of his comedy. But again, um, Nothing but positive experiences when I'm around him. Uh, nice guy, you know. So, yeah, it is what it is. Gino. Gino Raide. Now, this Gino is probably the most 
polarizing figure on like social media in Lebanon, at least in terms of like mid-level influencers. I'm not talking about influencers with millions of followers and stuff. I know Gino personally. We actually hung out together in Washington, D.C. years ago, like seven years ago or something. And much like Lama, who I always run into at like Marvel movie premieres, I see Gino anytime there's a Star Wars movie or like a Lord of the Rings movie. I've seen him at the Hobbit movies and I remember seeing him anytime there's a Star Wars movie. We catch up, we talk a little bit, we've done a couple of videos together. Look, personally, I really like Gino. And I think most people who get to know Gino and, and have hung out with him a few times would tell you that he's a perfectly chill dude to hang out with. But I think that Gino is a bit aggressive, to say it mildly, when he talks to people online. And um, while I would say, for example, like I agree with maybe 95% to 99% of what Gino believes in and what Gino fights for. But the way he, f the way he fights for it and maybe the way he sort of uh, you know, interacts with people online hurts his message and makes people who are inclined, who would normally on paper, be allies of his, kind of see him as an enemy. Um, and I think that's why Gino is on this list. And I think that's why a lot of people don't like Gino. I don't think it's because they disagree with him politically. Some people might, completely fair. Um, and I think he maybe the way he talks to people, he tends to perhaps sort of burn bridges rather than like extend a hand or something like that. Now, again, this is Lebanon. We have a horrible government. Can you blame a guy who has decided that maybe speaking politely and politely asking for things doesn't work with a government like ours. Sometimes you have to yell. Sometimes you have to be a little bit aggressive. And sometimes when you're arguing with people who are so stubborn and who, have, who still believe and defend ideals and people who clearly have failed after this country has literally blown up in our faces, I get why the guy gets angry. Do I agree that it's the best way to approach people? No, and I think this is why he's kind of a polarizing figure. So... That's my take on these five accounts. Um, I hope no one thinks I'm coming after him or anything like that. I just really wanted to share how I saw it. And uh, props for Newell for sort of asking that, because that is something that I was interested in doing. And also, please keep in mind, this is Newell's audience voting. So they might have a bias against some of these people. I remember not long ago, Newell and Gino kind of have like had a mini sort of argument on social media, which then got resolved very quickly. But this is also sort of a biased view. This isn't like the purest form. This is Newell's audience. So, yeah. Okay, let's talk about uh, the Netflix top 10 for this week. And I'm also going to give you guys a few television recommendations. Not all on Netflix, but I figured uh, we'll do both. So, for the Netflix top 10 in Lebanon, Lupin is still at number one. I still haven't seen it, but I still intend to. Number two, Bridgerton holding steady. Seems to be a very popular season in the country. Number three, it's a new Netflix movie called Outside the Wire. Uh, I have not seen it. Uh, honestly, it doesn't look that great. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to see it. Okay, I'd love to give you guys reviews of these things, but I don't have time. Ask Anise for reviews. Um, number four, Queen's Gambit still holding steady. A uh, very popular series. Number five, Double Dad. That is a new entry into the top ten. So was Outside the Wire. So we have two new entries so far. Double Dad, it is a... One and a half hour movie, feel good dramedy. Haven't seen it, not gonna see it. Uh, number six, Friends. God damn it, why is Friends? All right, Friends is still a number six. No surprise. Uh, we can be heroes. I think holding steady from number from last week as well. Still a number seven. It's doing pretty well with you guys. Number eight, Suits. Y'all still hitting those new episodes. Number nine, we got Focus. Um, again, still in the top ten. Very. The, the top 10 is pretty much unchanged from last week. So number nine, Focus, the movie starring Margot Robbie and Will Smith. And at number 10, Blink Empire. I think I know why it's at number 10, because we got a sexy Asian lady on the cover. Uh, it is a docu-soap, one season. Um, it's a bunch of rich Asian people, I think. So that's what that's about. Now, let me give you guys a few recommendations. So on Netflix, since... Since um, Queen's Gambit has been such a popular series with everyone, the sort of the writer of that series actually has another series on Netflix called Godless. It is a seven episode limited series Western. So seven episodes, one and done, no future season. So you can get it out of the way. The episodes are all 
over an hour long. It is incredibly high quality. The writing is amazing. I love Westerns. It is an incredibly good show. Some of the actors from uh, Queen's Gambit make an appearance. Uh, specifically, I forgot his name. He plays Whitey in, um, in Godless. It's a really, really, really good show. I really loved it, specifically if you like Westerns. But I love any series that's like seven high-quality episodes, just like a mini-series. It's amazing. You can check it out right now on Netflix. Highly, highly recommend it. Something else that is on Netflix that I'm going to recommend, which you guys might find weird, but if you look at the set behind me, you'll understand. I'm going to recommend Spectacular Spider-Man. It is a cartoon series that came out in 2008. It only lasted for two seasons because Disney had just bought like Marvel and they got the television rights to Spider-Man. So any old Spider-Man cartoons had to be discontinued. And Marvel, you know, Disney continued, like started a brand new series. But those two seasons of Spectacular Spider-Man are honestly the best Spider-Man has ever been in a cartoon. Um, it's peak Spider-Man to me, honestly. Peak Spider-Man, along with like Ultimate Spider-Man, the Ultimate Spider-Man comics, with Spider-Man 2, with Spider-Verse. It is such a great story. It's 26 episodes, 20 minutes each. I know on the, on the surface it might look very childish, but... If you're a fan of Spider-Man, these are very well-told stories. They do such a great job with a Venom saga, with villains like Electro. There's a special new twist on the Green Goblin. I really like the series, and obviously I'm extremely biased. But if you want a really fun Marvel cartoon, and the hands down the best Marvel cartoon, check out um, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man on Netflix. My third recommendation is going to be on Disney+. Plus. Uh, so Disney Plus in Lebanon, if you're subscribed to OSN, you can actually have access to it. Obviously, I'm going to talk about The Mandalorian. It is the most popular show on the planet. Most of you have already seen it by now. If you haven't, you should. Any Star Wars fan has already seen it. This message is for people who are not Star Wars fans and who think that they're not going to like the show. Let me tell you, the relationship between Baby Yoda and Mandalorian, the main character, will melt your heart. Whether you've seen every single Star Wars movie or you've never seen a Star Wars movie before. It is inspired, it is heavily inspired by old westerns, old serials, um, Japanese samurai films. It is such a great throwback to these older shows that it honestly recaptured what people loved about Star Wars. It is such a good story. You can stream both seasons right now. But again, if you're afraid of Star Wars, don't be. It is such a good show and it has universal themes that I think everyone is going to enjoy. My final recommendation is WandaVision, also on Disney Plus slash OSN, if you're in Lebanon or the Middle East. Um, it's such an incredible series. It is heavily, heavily, heavily inspired by old 50s and 60s um, sitcoms, you know, uh, like Bewitched, stuff like it. It's honestly so amazingly done. The performances by Paul Bettany and um, Elizabeth Olsen are amazing. It is such a refreshing show to watch. Two episodes are already out. Uh, this Friday, the third one will come out, so you'll have three episodes to watch. It's a very mysterious show. They're kind of building towards something that we're not going to know for a few more episodes, but it is so well done. The attention to detail is mwah. whether or not you, you love the Marvel movies or you've never seen them, I think this is a show that you're definitely going to enjoy. Now, obviously, fans of this, the franchise who know who Vision and Scarlet Witch are are going to enjoy it a lot more, but... You don't see stuff like this anymore. And it's very impressive that Disney, through The Mandalorian and WandaVision, are reviving these old types of shows that we don't get anymore. They have the money to do it so they can fuck around and experiment. And so far, it is paying off. So definitely check out these four shows. Can't recommend them enough. And to end our episode on a positive note, let me share a new Lebanese influencer who I love this week. And the person I want to talk about is Wissam Kamal. He is a Lebanese stand-up comedian... Um, he's also a friend, kind of like Anis, so you could say that I'm cheating. But let me tell you guys why I love Wissam Kamal. Just like Anis is a great ambassador for film, Wissam Kamal is the perfect ambassador for stand-up comedy in Lebanon. The dude is such a hard worker, and I really admire that. Like, I feel like the dude shoots maybe 13 fucking shows from his bedroom in his house. Shoots, He writes, shoots, edits, does everything on his own, constantly cranking out videos like every fucking day. The dude is a non-stop workaholic. Whether or not you love his comedy, I happen to think he's hilarious. But even if you don't like his comedy, you can't deny how hard the guy works, how passionate he is about stand-up comedy, and how much work he does to push the whole sort of movement of stand-up comedy, the whole industry, 
how far he's working to push it forward in Lebanon. I'm not sure what involvement he has with Awkward, but I mean, I know he's always there. He's always encouraging like me to try to try stand up comedy. I'd love to, but I'm too terrified. Um, I also kind of feel bad for Wissam because every idol he has turns out to be a sex pervert. He loves Louis C.K., who turned out to wank, uh, like wank in front of women. He asked permission. Hey, I still love Louis, but anyways, sex pervert. And Woody Allen, another, you know, mm, sex pervert. So anytime Wissam tells you he loves someone, they're probably a sex pervert. Other than that, he's just such a nice guy, honestly. Um, so not a difficult decision to make. So he is my second favorite Lebanese influencer on my ever-growing list. And on that note, we are going to end our episode of Do Not Worry. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. Please subscribe if you haven't. I need y'all's help. I need y'all's support. This is a brand new channel. So leave a comment as well if there's a topic you'd like me to discuss. Thank you so much for watching. The audio links are going to be available for Spotify and Remy. I'm working on Apple Podcasts. All the links you need are at the bottom. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that jazz. Thank you for watching. And as usual, do not worry. Do not worry. How to how how.